They don't even have room to put people in hospitals. They're keeping them in ambulances and bodies are stacked outside. So we said that it won't happen to all of us. And guess what? It wouldn't matter your color. If that happened to us, one day we're going to be put in a situation where I'm going to have to serve you, you're going to have to serve me, and color, race, creed, nationality, ain't going to matter. It's just the love of God. Yeah, that we're here to get our lives up. We're here to get our lives up. So. I, I, well, let me ask a question. Time's up. My time's time. up, and I have a question. We'll, we'll follow up with you out of the field. Well, Mr. Mayor, you're a very hard person to follow. We never, that's the reason why we filed a complaint against you, because we keep asking to speak to you. I don't have faith that you will talk to me. You are the mayor of Valdosta, and we filed a complaint against you. Because we keep asking to talk to you, and you ignore us. So I find it hard to believe that out. you will speak to us. Please sit down. I would like to put you on notice that I'm going to speak Look to you. Please sit down. I'm going to speak to you civilly for, for the things that you, the state here is going to be removed. The committee you selected. That, that exonerate you, I'm going to see you civilly. You stated that you said that I paid people to vote, and I did. And I'm angry. Very angry. Any other citizens wish to be heard this time? We can get an extra minute. So all these other people can just talk until they're done, and we can't? Aren't we citizens of Valdosta? We'll now move on to the city manager for Please issue the city manager's award. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my comments will be brief. Uh Citizens to be heard at public meetings in Valdosta, Georgia, have been arrested and placed in the Valdosta Lowndes County Jail for trying to address their elected officials. Moreover, this has been over documented through three administrations wherein. Certain citizens were granted more time to speak than others. At public meetings as the historic record will show. St. John 8.32, Joel 2 colon 1. GBR. Set his time so that he was handing out items. It was a little off. All right. Well, 
um, what we have here is calling you, brothers and you, please take very seriously. Because what we are about to go through here now will be some changes that have never occurred in the history of our loss. This is the Economic Appropriations Fund. We are going to be asking through our attorneys, through you guys, to appeal to the administration for an additional amount of money. We understand that there will be some funding coming down, and we want some reality to the south side. And what we have here is the Economic Proportions Fund request on demand of $250 million plus for the revitalization of the South Side, only located in Lalo, in the city of Lalo, in Georgia. The purpose is to restore the dignity of a once thriving community. And this is because 40 years ago, we constructed a bridge here that killed a many of the black businesses in this city and literally cut the city in half. A community today where only 3% of the population earn less than $10,000 annually according to the latest analysis of impediments taken in 2018 to 2024. And 40% live below poverty. This is a city that is 51% to 53% black. The fund we are asking to be distributed over a 10 year period, which means $25 million to serve this community a year. Of those services, the cost of the government body, which the attorney fees, the cost of court will be served, the body will be navigated, controlled, and governed. The total activity of the distribution allocated private funds. The purpose is the strategic planning of the thriving community to serve the needs of all the people, not just some of the people, but all the people in order to maintain families and the legal system that needs to be in place, which will include the committee formed from the, by the citizens of the South Side. The targets of the revitalization are upgrading the existing structures, easing of the loan system, which meet a certain need, and upgrading of areas, such as medical, recreation, educational, job training centers, that will not only train, but teach businesses as well, and the ethics of businesses of distant companies. This is vital to reverse the damage done to this community over the years of debt and exclusion. We stand and raise, and if we don't stand, we'll go down to six. Our attorneys will elaborate on the legal aspects of what we're about to go through. Now, I was asking for an extended period of time, and I cannot get that. You said your attorney's going to elaborate on that? Yes. How would your attorney get up next? Is he here? No, he's not here. He, he, they, they will be in such with you guys. Uh, if I can just have just a couple more minutes, if, if, if I will. We are standing to raise the issues, and we want to see some changes come to this city. And what we're going to be doing is going to actually help the city to a certain degree. It's going to be a lot of disagreement because it's going to mean a change in structural power at the very highest levels here. These the changes need to be done, need to be considered. It's something that we are going to be looking forward to, we're going to work hard to, and we are going to stand to raise the issues in, either here or even someplace in the federal courts. This is something that we are ongoing, and you are placed on notice that. Thank you about the change here in Thank you. Thank you, John. Is there any other citizens that wish to be heard at this time? <coughs> Will you?
signed the executive order 139-50, which hampered and cut out a lot of the benefit of the oppressed people across America. I'm not going to get into it, but you can find the reference that you find it all online. But what I want to talk about <coughs> is that President Biden revoked that order, that executive order, and he implemented 139 SP5. And this can be found on the web. Uh, they had some money coming down, and unlike the CBDG grant, Community block grant, everybody agree with that. We intend to oversee these monies coming to the city, school boards of education, and other places under the Biden Executive Order 139 Lyons County will receive $22,804,739 dollars. City of Valdosta will receive $16,254,692 dollars. The School Board of Education will receive, according to what I receive, approximately 2.5 times the budget. <coughs> and that's the best on that school board, I'm not exactly sure on that. But, we want to put Valdosta and Lyons County on the notice, Valdosta Maine, that we will oversee. If necessary, we will have attorneys to oversee how these money will be spent. Because urban renewal, CDBG grants, et cetera, et cetera, the African American community did not get their fair share. Too often, the system put white contractors over urban renewal. They put a black man there, but really it was a white guy that was benefiting from it. So we just want fairness. I want you to know that it's nothing that I'm doing. And what Mr. Robinson said, I'm sure he don't want nothing out of that, except fairness to everybody. You won't leave not one dime at the end of that comment. Uh, I would like to also request maybe another minute if I could. Give me the same 45 seconds that I've got. OK, a uh, minute we're heard. But anyway, um, this is for the good of the community. And I close by saying, we all might as well get on the ship. Because sooner or later, that thoughts are going to change. Don't think it's just that thoughts. Already, all the cities are standing before the elected officials as I'm standing here today. It's not just me. Reverend Lonely going across the state of Georgia. We're looking for change. We want help. We need help. We fought in every war of this nation. We are entitled to some of the economic power. And I want to be a part of that change. And I hope that you all want to be a part of that change. I'm not angry. You know, I'm not raising my voice. We just want equity. And by God's grace, thank you, Lord. Thank you, So thank you, Lord. Your time's up. Mr. Mayor, I think you can do better than that part. That's okay. You I think you can do better than that. 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 Exactly what you asked for. But it's okay. It's okay. Because in the end. This is to be heard, guys. You can do better. Can you stay the Okay. Not necessary. Can you stay the J.D. Rice, 501 Hobbit Drive, out of Austin, Georgia. Um, I came up here ready to convene the council on something, but. Uh, before I do that, I'm really appalled and offended that when you get to the Citizens to be Heard section, uh, I looked at the council several times, several people talking, uh, showing disconcern, not being attentive. And I think it's insulting for folks to sit through a council meeting to, be, to address council, and the least you can do is listen to them and be attentive to their concern. So, uh, Bear that in mind next time when someone gets up here. But I want to commend council um, for taking the initiative to implement the um, <clears throat> public transportation system that you, you, you started in Valdosta on demand. Um, we, need, we need that 18 years ago. So it's 18 years in the making. And I want to say
thank you for doing uh, what's needed to be done for this community over these past years. But with that in mind, I, I want us to be mindful that the uh, White House Office of Management and Budget is proposing to change the guidelines for metropolitan status. Right now, the guideline states that you have to be a city of 50,000 to be a metro city. They're going to try to change it to 100,000. And if that is approved, that's going to directly affect the funding that we get for our airport, the funding that we get for economic development, the funding that we get for education, and the funding that we get for public transportation. So I, I uh, 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 request that we contact all of our congressmen, uh, both of our U.S. senators, uh, GMA, uh, U.S. Council of Mayors, and whoever we have to, to make sure that everything is done to keep it like we have it now, that a metropolitan uh, status stays at 50,000 people and not 100,000 as proposed by OMB. If, that, if that's done, and that's going to uh, affect us directly because we got to subsidize those programs that I mentioned if we want to keep them. And I don't want to see our property taxes increase not one dime. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other citizens to be heard at this time? Yes, good evening, everyone. I'm Pastor Darren Neal, Pastor of Christ Gospel Missionary Baptist Church, Washington, yeah. Tulis Hill Avenue, President of NAACP. Uh, the reason I'm here tonight is exactly what uh, Reverend Robinson. Burr Rhymes uh, spoke about, uh, it's not that monies are coming down uh, the line, they're monies that are here. Uh, Joe, uh, uh, President Biden has done a great deal of, of work to bring the underserved, the underprivileged, those people that have been forgotten about, uh, to parity and to equity. Uh, one of the things he did with the American Rescue Plan was outline funding that should be given specifically to these people. This money that has come here to the city of Valdosta is to be used to help the underserved, to build up the infrastructure in those areas that are uh, dilapidated, worn down. Um, and one of the things that uh, raised my eyebrow, and this is not directed at you, Mr. Barber, in the name of money, in the name of life, but we sat with John Ossoff, and when John Ossoff stated the number of monies that was coming down the line, I heard the city manager say, hey, I've already got something to do with that money. Well, that money has, specifications attached to it. We cannot use that money to uh, supplement our budget or let's say supplant. Uh, this city has a budget already that's in place. That budget is uh, designed to keep us running. This money that's being sent is to help those people in these areas, especially in these census tract areas, uh, in which money just never seems to reach it. We have a history here in Valdosta of overlooking the poor, the impoverished, we must, we must admit that. There's no mental health treatment here for people who are on the street corners. We're taking them to county line to county lines. Uh, there's no, uh, we have children that are homeless right now. They're living in hotels, they're living in cars that we have just simply overlooked. There are roads in certain sections of town. I've been here 15, 16 years. And I'll be honest with you, I'm very passionate about this. I don't have to stay here any longer. I got it. all the training in the world to go anywhere I want to go. Go to any city in the world. I came here because the job brought me here. But after I saw the need of people, I decided to stay and fight. And I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to be watching. We do have an oversight committee. John Ossoff and his team is working with us uh, specifically to make sure these monies go where they are. Biden and John Ossoff, Raphael Warnock specifically spoke of how they undercut, what well, did undercut? They circumvented the middleman. So the money can come from the federal government directly to the city governments. But that's where the problem occurs. Because in the 16 years I've been here, monies have come down to help the underserved, and it just sits there. And it either disappears, or somehow magically is reallocated somewhere else, to be used somewhere else. I've seen monies that were set aside, as I go and read these budgets, that were set aside in underserved uh, communities just to fix the roads. And then we look up, man, I've just Maybe a minute or yeah, the additional minute that they are. Uh, then I see that these monies were collectively pushed towards Woodrow Wilson. You ride through town and there's a bump. I, I, in the 16 years I've been here, I can tell you what every bump is in impoverished neighborhoods. Nothing gets done. This is an opportunity now where I heard the word inclusion used tonight. We're all Valdostans. This money here is now 
set aside to bring people who've never ever seem to get looked at up to speed. Bringing folks that don't ever get the funding they need will help boost this economy, generate money for us, so we can all survive. If we were like India right now, India is in a situation where COVID is hitting so bad that 10,000 people died in one day. They don't even have a way to put people in hospitals. They're keeping them in ambulances and bodies are stacked up outside. So when we said that it won't happen to all of us, and guess what? It wouldn't matter your color. If that happened to us, one day we're going to be put in a situation where I'm going to have to serve you, you're going to have to serve me, and color, race, creed, nationality, ain't going to matter. It's just the love of God. Yeah, that we're here now. Time's up. We're here. Love and fear versus time's up. I, I, well, let me ask you a question. Time's up. My time's up, and I have a question. We'll, we'll follow up with you out of the field. Well, Mr. Mayor, you're a very hard person to follow. We never That's the reason why we filed a complaint against you, because we keep asking to speak to you. I don't have faith that you will talk to me. You are the mayor of Valdosta, and we filed a complaint against you, because we keep asking to talk to you, and you ignore us. So I find it hard to believe that you will speak to us. We sit down. I will want to put you on notice that I'm going to speak to you. We're going to speak to assembly for, for the things that you, the state here, see that be removed. The committee you selected, that, that exonerate you, I'm going to see you civilly. You state that you said that I paid people to vote, and I did. And I'm angry. Very angry. Any other citizens wish to be heard at this time? You get an extra minute. So all these other people can just talk until they're done, and we can't? Aren't we citizens of Valdosta? We'll now move on to the city manager. Don't you want to hear us? Please issue the city manager's award. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my comments will be brief. Uh, uh, this afternoon, uh, this week, uh, food truck, first thing sort of food truck Thursday will be next Thursday from 5 to 8.30. But as you're aware, if you've seen around town, we do have a, uh, some filming crews in town. Thank you. We're wrong. <laughs> So what do you think about your presentation? How was it accepted? And what do you think about tonight's meeting? Well, the main thing is that they were put on notice that an action is going to occur here. And they can take it lightly if they like, if they want to. But it's something they've been not taking lightly because we will be going to federal court. Well, what, what do you think about the mayor not seeming to give uh, a few well, minutes? That, that was unfair. That was unfair? That was totally unfair. Totally unfair. And they know it's unfair. You know, and it's a violation of our rights, a violation of your rights when they cut you down because you like to free your speech. Well, one other thing, with all the black councilmen, do you think they should have stood up for us? When I say us, the right to speak because I've gone to other cities and the council will say, give him two other minutes, three minutes. Yeah, and, but I, I didn't see that tonight. So it seems to me that that was also a little different from other the cities that I've interviewed elected officials at. Well, let me explain something to you. See, when things are situated the way it is here, you can expect anything. It's, 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 it's nothing right here, it's none whatsoever. And I'm going to close with saying that maybe perhaps when we get done, there will be some changes here because we are going to go all the way. With this. Okay, thank you very much. Are you all from the sneak by your hair? Bring that for me. You want to say a few words? Yeah. You want to do it in here? Yeah. We can do it in I want it in here. Yeah, we're doing it in here. Pastor Neal. What? Okay. Pastor Neal, uh, what do you think about tonight's meeting and why are you so compassionate about your points that you was trying to make and addition that the mayor's uh, not granting uh, a few minutes? I go to other cities across the state and they give people other minutes, additional minutes. And mostly it's the councilmen that stand up and grant that. They asked in the council, say, yes, we want to give two minutes, three minutes. They didn't do that here tonight. Why do you think this council is different from other councils? Well, I think that this council is not willing to hear the people. Three minutes is not enough to state your claim. We've listened to an hour and a half long meeting. 
in which four people were given 12 total minutes with additional three minutes. We're talking at least 15 to 17 minutes that was given to uh, four people, citizens, that just had something to say. Uh, the entire night was given to uh, to me an agenda that was already set in place, that it planned to go down just like it went down, a cookie cutter type meeting in which uh, no one is supposed, supposed to oppose. I'm here tonight and I'm very passionate about this issue because Joe Biden, Senator John Ossoff, Senator Raphael Warnock, they have ensured, made sure that monies would go out to people that have underserved, uh, that have been disenfranchised, uh, folk that have been hurt. Uh, the American, or those people that the American dream, this alleged American dream seems to bypass. This is an opportunity now, the door's wide open, and if it does not get, if we don't walk through it, we'll never get through it. The door's open now to where funding can take people who've never been able to uh, receive that dream, that they can get it now. And I'm here to make sure that that money goes where it's supposed to. There, there are people in our city government right now, uh, let's say specifically the city manager, who has uh, the opportunity to place these monies in different places. And I understand it from, uh, I understand it to be uh, differently. I see that he has an agenda to place money to supplement a budget that's already in place and to place uh, monies where uh, typically they shouldn't go. This city has already budgeted for the different things that they're trying to do. Uh, maintaining our infrastructure in these census tract areas, these impoverished areas is very important. Uh, bringing these people who, these small businesses that have been pushed aside, that money's there for them. Uh, families that are living in cars, uh, families that are living in hotels. We have children that are homeless. This shouldn't be in a system in which we just built an $86 million high school but can't take a child that's living in a car and they know about it. That's wrong. It's no other way to say it but wrong. And this money is brought to bring those people out of those holes. And if we do not do that, then we're not the government or the city we say that we are. Pastor Neal, uh, in addition to being pastor, what other title do you carry here in the city? I'm the president of the NAACP, uh, the Lowndes County chapter of the NAACP. OK, now, I, I stated when I was up, and I just want you to give me your opinion. Uh, this, the, the issue that I addressed here tonight in Valdosta is in Waycross, it's across the state of Georgia, it's across the nation. This is nothing that anybody's asking locally, but it is a national and federal uh, movement. Am I right? That's correct. There are, there are cities, there are city governments that are standing up everywhere. We, the people, have reached a point where we're fed up. We're tired of being overlooked. We're tired of being underserved. We're tired of uh, the promises that are broken. There's money in place right now, not yesterday, not coming. There's money in place right now that could help people in a very, very, very mighty way. If we do not take advantage of that, we're going to see the same old status quo occur where money's come down the line and they're never used where they're supposed to be. Some executive order, some executive decisions done, and money's never reached the black community. And that includes CDBG grants as well? CDBG. The, 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 Joe Biden in his American Rescue Plan specifically spelled out four groups of people, not just minorities. He spelled out black people, Latino, American Indian, and Asian, that these four groups have been underserved across the United States, not just this year, not last year, but for decades, for centuries, we've been overlooked and we built this country. Joe Biden has changed his position, the position he held some 40 years ago. He's changed his position. He has redeemed himself. He now wants to go backward and correct those mistakes and make sure the people, he has identified that the people of this country that I just named have been overlooked. It's something that we ignore. We pretend racism doesn't exist, but there are black people being shot by the police every day and every day there's an excuse as to why these people are being shot. There are people right now that are homeless, that people are overlooked. It took Flint, Michigan years to get fresh drinking water. Why? There are people in Florida that, that suffered a hurricane three years ago that are still uh, homeless and don't have. When do we as a people correct these mistakes? We've been given money, free money, to correct these things, to build and include, be in, uh, an inclusive city. Why don't we take advantage of it? This is not the time to do the status quo. Okay, in closing, uh, do you give me permission to publish this to the general public where no other news media may not publish this? Yes, sir. Do you mind me publishing it? No, So I the people in Valdos will be educated because education is a weapon, yes. drugs are the enemy. Yes. Thank you very much. All truth and nothing but the truth.
Valdosta, then, mayor and council arrested 15, 15, outstanding. Citizens in the renaming of Barber Park at a public meeting. Valdosta Historic City Charter of 1860 was reluctantly removed after a request from GBR. It read, The mayor and council, they shall pass all proper and necessary laws and ordinances for the control of slaves and free persons of color in said town and suppress and abate all nuisances arriving from hogs, dogs, horses, or other stock straying at large in said town, or from other causes. The Valdosta 15, arrested May 5, 2005 for removing a racist. Background, name, over Barber Park. HTTPS colon slash slash south ga justice dot blogspot dot com slash two zero one zero. One Kaye Fielden, white female. Two Lee Touchton, white female. Three C Harris, black female. Four F Chakay Ray, black female. Five Floyd Rose, black male. Six Freddie Richardson, black male. Seven George B. Rhines, black male. Eight Jesse Clark, black male. Nine J. Y. Mosley, black female. 10.K Camion, black female. 11.M.T Sherman, black female. 12. Reggie Griffin, black male. 13. Tony Daniels, black male. 14. Willie Head, black male. 15. Willie J. Robertson, black male. Lastly, apparently, the 1860 city charter was removed in 2005. But the 1860 charter mentality remains in Valdosta until this day. GBR. Well, that's all the order of June 24, 2021 my meeting with mayor and council. Valdosta City Council meeting for June 24, 2021. With no Georgia state flag flown over many government buildings. As other cities counties across the United States of America. While those in power. Reports that's not an issue in Valdosta Lowndes County, Georgia. Home of Moody Air Force Base, I am George Boston Rhines. Reporting on behalf of the public right to know under our form of government. St. John A32, Joel 2 colon 1. GBR. The water meter in front of the water meter. Now we've all been told over the years that uh, you know the city owned it up to the water meter, including the water meter, and then after that the homeowner was responsible. But by the water meter being turned off, we uh, realized it was not that. So they finally, after about three days, they sent three people, uh, three gentlemen out to work on it from the city crew. They uh, brought shovels and dug it up in the big vacuum machine. They found out the water line was incorrectly installed originally been under her driveway. So now it's boiling out of her driveway. We're here to see if we can get some kind of help by the city to get it repaired. Gerald, you got the right people in the room right now, so uh, answer is they will follow up with you as soon as this meeting's over. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else wishing to be heard? Good evening. Good evening. Gentlemen and ladies, uh, my name is Dr. J.C. Moore. Uh, my address is 5150 Calvary Circle. I am the minister of the West Hill Church of Christ, and uh, we are located on 84. And we, we encountered several transits walking by, and I counsel these gentlemen. Um, many of them are addicts, uh, and uh, they're stuck on a vicious cycle of addiction. I have a little success uh, helping them get off of it, but after I get done counseling them, they go back into the community that, that created them addicts. Uh, so I've been trying to purchase a house where I can house these gentlemen. Um, I was told by zoning, uh, I, I had a, uh, a home inspection done for a house, and I was told by zoning that I could not purchase that house and house those gentlemen there. Uh, so I'm coming here to seek some support. And, um, in my efforts to purchase a home 
and place these addicts in the home. I will not uh, conduct any programs that, that will just be housed there. All the programs will be conducted at the church as it has been in the past. What's the address on the, the home that you're looking for? 200 College Street, I'm sorry. All right, we'll follow up with you after the meeting. I appreciate you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, sir. Any other citizens wish to be heard? Extending time. 
I go across half the state of Georgia. This is a, a routine procedure. At council meeting, somebody on council would ask the mayor, we offer a motion that you give me one or two minutes, something like that. They vote on it, they grant it. Or they just prove it by the hand of the voter, of the elected official that voted for the office. But last meeting, apparently the county, I mean the city officials who were voting by the people, uh, took the power from the people and granted it all to the mayor. And a lot of people are dissatisfied about it. Some people are asking that some of y'all don't even run in the next election. Black, black pastor stood before you. He was almost asked to leave the meeting, if not arrested. I have documentation, along with others, proof that there's a double standard. Some people are given more time than others. This is not a figment of my imagination. I have it on video camera, and I have witnesses. <coughs> Val Dosta might as well buckle down. And I mean that. It may take litigation to change Val Dosta. But I'm here to say as a humble, retired military veteran, that something must change. Many of you on council know that something must change. Because you say it behind closed doors, but you will not say it in the public. That old 1860 chapter said that the mayor council shall have all property and straight laws and orders to control of slaves and free persons of color, and to control suppressed and abate all noises arriving from hogs, dogs, horses, and other livestock in the luster. We in 2021, that child was removed, but it seems as if though that mentality remains the same. I'm your friend. That's why I come to you like I did. George. Ha <laughs> ha. 